Don't you just hate when you have that coworker who um, wants to make a scene and just jump up on the table and yeah. Howdy folks, welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. It's been a couple of months since I've been here and y'all haven't put up with, have to put up with my autistic rambling on here about whatever and hell, channel's probably better without that, but I've been busy doing a bunch of work with venture capital on drones and helping folks get their licenses to build bombs <laughs> without going to jail with all the ATF and State Department compliance stuff. If you're interested in help for that, make sure to check out our sister company, Ordnance and Energetics Consultant, LLC. We have the new man of the hour, Mr. Webley, that <laughs> I had no intention of getting a puppy, but no kidding, there I was, day before Iwa, we're getting ready to leave for Enforce Tack and Iwa there in Germany, and um, Allie was sitting there barking at something. I was gonna have an office day and get a bunch of stuff done while, um, before we took off for three weeks in Europe, Allie starts barking, I come out, and holy crap, there was puppies, like puppies everywhere, and so I started petting them, and then mom showed up, and um, we're like, okay, what's going on? So it took us a while to find out whose they were, brought them back and they were like, well, you want one? And it was like, I need a puppy, like I need a hole in my head, but yes, of course, I will take the puppy. And so Webley, <laughs> God was part of that. Then I, the next day I left for three weeks in Europe. Um, and so I got to miss all the fun of him chewing everything, but thank you to Jake and our other business partners for watching my puppy while I was gone. All right, well, we've tried to do this take a couple times, but Allie really apparently <laughs> wants to be in the video. So we'll get on the video with Allie, who's, of course, probably much more fun than I am. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about some of the things we see in the comment section, some of which are more colorful than others. But we're going to give you all some of the behind-the-scenes stuff where we talk about the legalities and whatnot. Now, of course, I'm not a lawyer, and none of this is legal advice, but... I'll give you some career advice, even though I'm the last person you should be taking that from, and I'm old enough to be some of your father, or some of y'all's father, not your daddy. Definitely not that. But if some of y'all are not very smart, um, eh, you don't do too good, you don't do that well with intellectual things or thinking or whatnot, and you hate doing work, man, I'll tell you, you should go out there, go to law school and get a JD. I've been doing a bunch of work with lawyers, and wow, there is no other group except for the United States Army uh, Reserve Civil Affairs officers. Um, lawyers are the only people that will give them a run for their money um, for being lazy and incompetent. But anyways, let's get on to the actual details. All right, so topic number one is gonna be, why is this on YouTube? There's always some Karen, or whatever they say Karen in other countries, um, that seems to be complaining about like, I can't believe that's on YouTube. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint y'all that, you know, we're not here starting Billy Bob's militia or whatever. Although it was funny that one of the folks that, uh, <laughs> our consultant that um, we didn't end up working with said that we were a bunch of yahoos screwing off with explosives in our backyard, which I thought was actually pretty funny. And well, we've got a big backyard, so it's really <laughs> not that far from the truth sometimes, I think. But anyways, all this stuff is fully legal. We are licensed with all sorts of things with the United States government from the ATF to the State Department and rest assured that the ATF, FBI, HSI, and of course, most importantly, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they definitely know about what we're doing. So, I mean, if you want to entertain yourself and call the cops on us, so that I mean, you could waste their time. I'm going to think it's kind of funny, but rest assured that this is all 100% legal. All right, one of the questions that we got while I was off in Europe and Jake was having a good time with the guys from DNS Creations was that why is this shotgun a destructive device? So what happens, a destructive device, there's two types. We've talked about this multiple times. There's explosive ones like bombs and whatnot. The other one is large caliber destructive devices, which is generally defined as a weapon that has a caliber that's over 50. But there's an exception for sporting shotguns. And some shotguns have been declared to be destructive devices, such as the uh, SPOS 12 and the um, oh, Street Sweeper, which was a hunk of junk and the best thing that ever happened to it was becoming a destructive device. But anyways, what happens whenever you turn a... Webley, you are such a goof. Um, 
Oh God. Anyways, um, whenever you're going to take a weapon that's over half of an inch and you're going to turn it into something that you are explicitly using it as a mortar to lob explosive ordnance, there's pretty much no way that ATF is going to say that, yeah, that right there is still a sporting shotgun. So this is why we registered this shotgun as a destructive device. Same thing that we did with the ones we were using to fire the Molotov cocktails in a previous video. Next one is going to be with rockets. So we've been doing some work on 3D printed rock. By the way, I apologize, but Webley, like this is the only way he's not going to be insane by being obnoxious, and he's much more, <laughs> much more pleasant than I am. Um, anyways, this right here is an RPG-2 that we got from AZAO out there in Arizona. And this right here is registered as a destructive device, even though it doesn't have any energetics in it. This is something that we can use in the future if we want to, act, well, when we actually activate it with explosives, we're going to be good to go. One thing that I would very much caution y'all on is that if you're going to be doing something with like rockets or whatnot, if you're going to be using energetics like smokeless or black powder that you can normally buy over the uh, counter without any issues or having a federal explosives license, those exemptions only apply if you're using it for small arms ammunition or a few other very niche exemptions. Now, if ATF is going to really notice you doing that, that's a totally different question. But I'm here to... Oh, God, Webley, I love you too, but you are... Ah. Anyways, I'm trying to make a video here and so I can afford to feed you. Um, anyways, if you're going to be going out there and using, like I said, smokeless or black powder for rockets or something that's not what it's designed for, like small arms ammunition or cannons, we'll talk about that here in just a minute, um, I would be very cautious about doing that because technically you're going to be using explosives then and you have to store them in an explosives magazine and you're supposed to also have an FEL to purchase it. Third topic we're going to be talking about that we keep seeing comments about is where are the STL files or all the other stuff related to that? Well, those of y'all that think that we're like revolutionaries and we're, we're going to join us. Oh, hello, Allie. Thank you for joining us again on the video. There's 300, <laughs> stupid dog. There's 300 acres here for her to go do stupid, dumb, big, dumb dog stuff. And she chooses this freaking table. I love you too, Allie, but I'm trying to like make the money needed to feed you. All right. Well, sorry. Allie clearly wants to be in the video um, much more than I do. So, all right. Anyways, so like I said, we're not part of the Judean People's Front or the People's Front of Judea or whatever that you want to have for your militia and all that nonsense that um, we're doing this right here because, well, we're a bunch of cynical, cold-hearted capitalists that want to make money off of this right here. And so us handing out our IP without, well, y'all paying for it, eh, that's probably not a good idea for us to be able to make money in the future and also Jake has spent much time slaving away that he could be doing different things coming up with all these designs. And finally, aside from the mercenary elements, there's also this total party pooper called the International Traffic and Arms Regulations, also known as ITAR. I gave a presentation off Deutsch at IWA in Germany, uh, what, earlier this month on the whole thing, so I've, uh, I've brushed up on that quite a bit. But anyways, the um, International Traffic and Arms, or ITAR, what that controls is the export of things that are classified as defense articles. Now, defense articles are, are a whole bunch of different things, which can range from bombs and aircraft um, to the IP for how things work. So, the STL files for how you go out and manufacture a 3D printed hand grenade, um, that right there is very much going to be controlled by ITAR. And since we get some folks that are clearly, well, they have a, they speak English with a, without saying y'all like I do kind of thing, so, and they're not in the United States, for us to be able to send that to them, um, it would require a significant amount of paperwork from State Department that, well, we don't want to do it. We also just don't like those unannounced visits from the FBI. You know, I just realized what it is. I didn't feed her. And those of y'all that have big, dumb Labradors like me, um, y'all probably understand how it works when they get hangry and want attention and food. So I'm sorry, Allie, that I didn't feed you before your star and roll on the video. All right. So the other thing that we keep getting asked, aside from where are the STL files, is uh, when does something like this actually become a destructive device? Well, that's gonna come down to, again, 
We don't have this in writing from the ATF, but I'm gonna say that whenever you start adding energetics to it, if you sit there and were to 3D print these things at home, such as this mortar round, well, you can see that it <laughs> can take at least 75 pounds of force like that from big dumb dogs uh, laying on it. That So it's actually pretty sturdy, Jake. Uh, anyways, if you were to go out there, well, I would not recommend doing this at home printing them. As long as you didn't add energetics to them, eh, you could be okay. But again, that right there may be something where you beat the wrap, but not the ride. Another one that came up was asking about the pneumatic mortar and why that was a destructive device compared to a black powder cannon. The way that that works is that normally a black powder cannon would be classified as a destructive device because it obviously has a bore um, over 50 caliber and it's actually throwing stuff out there. It's not a sporting shotgun. But there's an exemption as an antique firearm that it falls under, which also allows you to use the black powder in it without it being considered a destructive device or explosives. Now, the thing that you get into, if you were to make explosive cannonballs, which we're working on, if you were to fire those out of a black powder cannon, such as we did with our Hell Cannon Mortar, oh my God, four years ago with Cody from Weapon Genetics out here, we need to bring him out again. Um, when we were firing that, that was not a destructive device because it was a muzzle-loading black powder cannon. But a pneumatic mortar that you're actually using for literal explosive ordnance because it has a bore over half of an inch, um, that right there still qualifies as a destructive device, even though you're not using any sort of traditional ammunition or any sort of propellant with it aside from compressed air. The final one is gonna be those of y'all crying with like burnt liquors, I ain't registering nothing, and all that stuff that I often suspect, I don't mean to be rude, but some of that often sounds like you're hanging out in your mom's basement. Now, if we're gonna consume some cold adult beverages and start talking about politics, oh hell yeah. We're gonna talk about getting rid of government agencies, get me all excited for my libertarian night watchman state that I wanna have where the government has a very, very tiny list of things that you can't do. I'm all about it. Fortunately, well, we're trapped here in reality. And reality, man, it's kind of a party pooper. And there's a lot of things the government says you can't do without the right pieces of paper on the wall. And as much as I would love some of those government agencies to not exist, unfortunately they do. And so if I'm gonna be the cold-hearted, cynical capitalist that I am trying to make money, and I wanna do that by building bombs on the freaking internet, well, I'm gonna have to follow a bunch of rules. But what I would say is that those of y'all that wanna show the man how it's done, show us, man, I'm looking forward to it. Y'all go ahead and you know don't get the right paperwork and all the other BS I gotta put up with for uh, running our business. You just go out there and say, yeehaw, do it on your own, and let's see what happens. Show us how it's done. All right, well, thanks for watching our video. Just a quick recap, the most important lesson that we learned here was feed Ali before any video so that we can actually film without having 75 pounds of big, dumb dog. I know, I love you, but you're not very bright. Um, the other stuff that we learned is that yes, we have all the licenses. You can cry all you want to the feds or to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Nobody really cares. Shotguns you're going to use for a mortar have to be used as a destru have to register as a destructive device. We're not going to be giving out the STL files because we're cynical, black-hearted capitalists trying to make money. Not going to join the revolutionary people's front of whatever. That um, pneumatic weapons are still going to or pneumatic mortars are still going to be considered a destructive device, unlike a black powder cannon. And then, oh, Allie. And then finally, if you want to go out and show us how it's done without all the right paperwork on the wall, have fun at it. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab.